Welcome to another episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got a guy calling in. He's locked up. I'm pretty sure it's in Ohio. He's been locked up for a while. Um, he's going to explain some of his story. He reached out to me and um, he heard about what I do. I speak to people from prison. I, um, I try to get together some people and um, let out their stories and turn them into mini documentaries. So what I'm going to do with him, he's going to call in. I'm going to ask him what it's like to be locked up during Christmas time and things like that. And he's going to explain why he's locked up and what sent him there. And um, he's going to explain what he has going on. Now he's going to be calling me any minute and we're going to get it in. So. I appreciate every single person out there that's been supporting me. I got love for all of you. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you can get my videos every time they drop. And I have a lot of things in store. I'm really excited for the future. 2022 is going to be an insane year for me. Stay tuned. I hope you guys are along for the ride. I'm going to bring you with me. And thank you, man. That's all I can really say. Thank you to everyone who supported me. Call is from a collection facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using GTL. Hey, what's up, man? Hello. Hey, what's going on, man? How are you doing, brother? I'm I'm good. So you want to just tell the people, get right into your story, get right into why you're there, and or and whatever you want to speak on. Yes, uh, this is Nathan C. Parker, better known as OG Cali, LA Blue, 59th Street Rule Gangs, the Criminal Crip. Been incarcerated for 28 years of my life. Got charged with that when I was 15 years old. Had a couple of robberies, a voluntary manslaughter, kidnappings. They in and out of BYFs and adult penitentiary my whole life. And finishing up a 28 year bit in the state and two in the feds. I come home April 9, 2023. I currently have a lot of retired gang members from the Bloods, Crips, Pyrus, and Brimside. We got a movement called Black Lives Matter, prison reform going on in the streets right now, trying to give back to society so you do not have to use this as a revolving door. Yeah. To all the young ones called education is a new game. This call is originating from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored. This is not where it's at. We need, we need to give back to the community. And get back to our loved ones and our family, man. Like, it's been my whole life. I'm 44 years old. I've been locked up in a dark penitentiary since I was 15 years old. Thank you for using GTL. Thank you. I've gotten my GED. Uh, I completed approximately 100 plus programs. I completed 92 programs in 42 months and went to the parole board and due to my past history, no matter how good I did, the adult parole authority at the parole board maxed me out. So I turned a six month parole violation into a 12 year sentence just because of my history. So they, so even though you do good, your past history can always weep, you know what I'm saying? And they, and they can always use it against you. And I say that to say that you don't never forget where you come from, but remember where you're at. So take all the good that you could possibly can and prosper so you don't have to come back to these type of situations. Like I got, like I said, that Black Lives Matter prison reform, people that's currently gotten out or that's on death row with people on the streets that's fighting to get them off death row and fighting for their lives back. Like some people don't get a second chance. And I say that to say, like, I come home April 9, 2023. I'm trying to give back to the youth and to the ones still incarcerated to help out. Like, I'm a certified tutor in mathematics and spelling. I'm a certified animal trainer. I'm a certified tailorer. And in the Ohio prisons, they stop letting us get bachelor's and associate's degrees. So I, I gotta, if I get out, all I need is one and a half semesters, and I have a bachelor's and associates. Wow, so you've been putting in a lot of work since you've been there. ...from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored. I, I did 
do mentoring. I train animals. I train the dogs. I do mentoring. You know what I'm saying? I talk to the youth, even the ones that act like they're listening and don't listen. So what would what would you say what would you say to a kid that's out there wilding out on the streets? Uh, what would you say to them? Like it's not worth it. People like me have paved the way. You know what I'm saying? Like like we paved the way for y'all. Like so, I'm telling you from a perspective that's been shot, pistol whipped, stabbed, on life support twice. Shot up and been in prison in my, my whole life. That from a real live gangbanger to you young ones in the streets, if you can get away, get away. Like education is new game, so do something better for yourselves. Don't be like us. Like, this is, you're either going to end up in prison behind walls on death row, doing a life this, or end up dead. Or they're gonna be in pri- they're gonna be in prison doing some stuff that they don't want to do because the gang makes them do it, you know, hurting other people. Or come to prison and just catch a life bitter gang, do a gang bang your whole life in prison, or be a flunky for some. Like you know, some people can't make it. You either gonna be a, a, a gangster. You gotta be someone's son, or you gotta be someone's boy. Yeah. Um, so I mean, and, and that's the reality of things. But like, like I try to talk to the youth in here. We got mentorships for the ones who do want it. Some prosper, some continue to do it, and some just be like, all right, fuck it, I'm just gonna do me. This is what it is. I'm blood and I'm cursing. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So they, go, they fall back off. But we don't never shut the door on them. You know, so, like, like lately, I'm getting ready for Ramadan. I took my Shahada, you know, over 20 years ago. I'm planning on being Islam. I'm planning on teaching what's right. You know, uh, teaching the dudes and the young youth, no matter who you praise. No matter what God you pray, it's just one. Believe in a higher power. Find your way in life. So so you don't have to end up dead or something. What was you going know, through your mind? mind? When when you were getting sentenced, what, what was going through your mind when you got that sentence as, as a young man? Honestly, I looked at my mother and seen her cry and said, Mama, your baby's going to be all right. I'm a motherfucking gangster. And my mom and my mom just shook her head because I was 15 years old. I got childhood adult. I was facing a life bit. I ended up with two good lawyers and only got an eight to 25. But I had kidnappings, manslaughters, robberies. I had, I, you know, I, I was young. I moved to the state of Ohio in 90, 91. I caught my case in 93. Wow. From outside, I moved to Ohio in 91. From Los Angeles, California, around the LA riots times, to get away because I was young. And, and some say young and dumb, I just say young and loyal. See, one thing about me, and to a lot of people in the streets, they got to realize that this is a true saying. The love makes you related, but loyalty makes you family. And that model of being loyal to who's loyal to me or who you think is loyal. Is what is what had me incarcerated for so so much extra time. Like I just like I said, I just turned six months in to twelve years. I turned a six month parole violation in to twelve years. Why? What kind of things? What kind of things were you doing to add time onto your sentence? Illegal stuff, uh, you know, selling drugs, uh, knocking off COs. Cell phones, getting drugs thrown over the phone, uh, having relationships with correction officers, uh, and then when they catch me, I wouldn't tell them. You know, being loyal, not being a rat. So it's either you kill or we're going to give you more time. So then you on that. Well, I'm a gangster. Just give me more time, and you're going to get more time. So it's my fault. I didn't have to do. Long, but when 
you're in here and you're used to living a fast life and you don't eat state food and you don't you only got a handful of family left and your family and your kids you try this call is originating from an ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored so when you got to do what you got to do you go to the best thing you know what what to do you're either going to sit down there and do a law body citizen to follow all the institutional rules or you're going to do what you know how to do best rob still or kill I'm not killing anyone because I want to go home and be a father to my kids and my grandkids. Yeah. So, I uh, don't steal because stealing is a sign of weakness. So, either I'm going to pull up on you and take your shit from me, or I'm going to hustle for mine. So, I hustle for mine. And even if we're not supposed to do that, so people get. You know, people hear me, oh, he's got phones, he's got tobacco, oh, he's got the narcotics, and they send kites into the world, and we're investigating the police, they, we call them snitches, or uh, fuck boys, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and they tell. And, and, and so that, that's why I turned the six months in to 12 years. I got caught with six phones and nine grams. I went to the pro boy, they gave me 36 months. Then I went back up, and I did catch a violent case. I was aiding the sister, one of my crit brothers, who got into it with, a, with, with a, some other opposition, some other gang members, and stabbed him up, and then caught more time. Now, you have and to do I that. Got, like, if, if someone gets into something, you have to go, right? You have to go. There's no, there's no one way in, one way out. If you if you're claiming crip or blood or Latin King or something, no matter what organization you claim, if you're claiming this and you're in prison and you claim this, so if one goes, you all go. And the ones that don't go, they're gonna get gotten by the ones that didn't get caught or when the other ones get out. You, you gotta pay the you gotta pay the repercussion and consequence. So it ain't no half stepping. If you're gonna crip or blood or cuz, whatever you do, you're gonna do. And like I said, I'm 44 years old, and this has been my life. So I'm trying to tell people not to do it and hand the reins down to do it and get that white streak because I've been so wrong my whole life. Yeah, that reminds me of my friend Cuzzo. He He's a crip, and he... uh he tries to mentor kids now. He wants to steer people in the right direction. He's from uh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah I, got, I, got, I got a lot of homies from Pennsylvania, from, from Pittsburgh, matter of fact, from Hollywood. That, yeah. That's one of the main spots in Pittsburgh. You got to ask your homie cousin about the homies who, uh, out of Hollywood in Pittsburgh, California, down in Hollywood. That, that, that's where a lot of the real crips is down there in Hollywood. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely uh, ask him about it. Yeah, all you got to do is say, what's up with them homies? He's like, what you know about them? How do you know that? Like I was talking to some, some California dude that fucks with a couple people from Homewood. You know what I'm saying? I had to put the names out there. But... This call is originating from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored. So you were talking to, to a homie from Los Angeles, California, yeah. who claims 5'9 Hoover Crip, who actually lived on 59th and Hoover when he was young. He's been in a high prison for approximately 28 and a half years and half a year and a half left. Wow. And all they got to do is, uh, matter of fact, uh, my brother, who is from New Jersey, who is a uh, G sign, they're called G sign. GKB Bloods up out of New Jersey and New York. He's he, he's only been hard like 11 months. And he's the one who linked me up with some California Bloods from Nicholson Gardens and a couple of Cali homies from Ross's Crips. They got, they're the ones who started that Black Lives Matter movement. And, and they've been doing podcasts and stuff. It's called Black Lives Matter Prison Reform. Yeah. Prison Chapter. It's the blue bandana, the red bandana tied together in a knot, coming together as one with the fist. And uh, I gave him your number. He's in the class right now. Today's the first day of class because they got representatives and, and uh, politicians that's trying to back them up in this movement because they want parts of it. Yeah. You have yeah. one minute. Thank you so much, man. So he, he 
he's gonna be uh he's gonna be calling you hopefully probably like eight thirty or something. Whenever that meeting's over, he'll be calling you and you can see his podcast. He's already written two books. One is published. It's called From the Sandbox From the Sandbox to the Hellbox by Joseph P. Langdon. He did twenty two years uh five years in the hole, twenty two years in the maximum security and he had a light book. It got overturned now he's on the street doing what's right. Wow. You know, so yeah, people can order his book. Uh he's gonna be getting a hold of you because we heard a lot about you and that you're trying to help give back and that you're in position. So and he's on the streets now, so y'all can FaceTime, he does podcasts, he can link you with all the gang members. Uh, real gang members, New York, New Jersey, Ross Cali, Oakland. Thank you for using GTL. Uh, listen, yeah, my brother, like, like, if you got something to write with, like, you can look this book up, too. Or you might, he's not on podcast right now, he's in this class, but I gave him that number. So he's going to be calling you tonight, for sure. If not tonight, tomorrow, because he's real busy with doing this, with, with this uh, thing. He's been going back and forth. He's currently staying in Dayton. He's currently in Dayton, Ohio, right now, unless he went back to New Jersey or California. But he's been going from New Jersey to California to Dayton, Ohio, to he, he been, he, uh, to Arizona. He's going to all these spots giving back and meeting with people to, 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 to push this out there. Yeah. So, and, and, and I apologize because I, I got your information on November 4th or 7th from, from my little homie. And my homie's a man too. He's from Chicago. This call is originating from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored. And uh, he, he had like two, he sent him like two or three videograms too. And he was, uh, he was sitting in like a room or like, I don't know if it was a pit, I can't remember because my mind is racing, but I seen like two or three videograms and that's what he had, he had me watching them. Yeah. And because, uh, and then I'm like, damn, okay, okay, okay. And then he has your name and your number and stuff. And then he had, uh, the tape. Yeah, like, like, like a cover of a tape, um, what is it, Gang Bang the City or something. It was the homies calling from Cook County Jail and, and, and like this phone call and then it was talking and shit. And I said, oh, you had, you had nothing you got to do and what's right. That, that, that's what we on. Yeah, that's why I'm going to, I'm going to have this. I'm going to put this video into the video I do tonight. I'm going to go live in a little while and I'll incorporate this video into the show tonight. One of them hammers, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, these, these police down here, there's so many rats down here. Everybody was getting knocked with the fucking phone. So I'm trying to make it home. I ain't trying to catch them more time. So I ain't been in the mix doing nothing illegal. I've been doing everything, as we say, uh, doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Everything's uh, in the up and up, right? <laughs> I'm doing everything righteous right now. But I mean... Uh, Trust me, I know how hard it is to stay in the right direction when um everyone around you does not want to do the right thing, you know? Oh, there's, there's plenty. Plenty of my own and plenty of others that we try to mentor and they're like, you know, when, when, when they get there, they get there, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are, what, what are some of the uh, things you've seen young people um go in there and have to deal with that go in there and try to act tough or go in there and, and um, say the wrong things to people? What are some of the things that, that happen to kids in there that cause trouble and they can't handle it? What what happens to them? Because I want people to know out there what will happen if they go there. Uh, what will happen to them? If you come here and you're not already affiliated, first of all, if you come to the joint and you're in the organization, you're still going to have to prove yourself. Just a pure election will say anything. You can say, oh, I'm good this or I'm blood this. If you don't know what you're supposed to know or know somebody who is somebody, then you're going to have to, you're going to be tested. And if you're not in the organization, nine times out of ten, they try to either, that, that's the thing about uh, Muslims in prison. We're not a gang. Well, religions is like Christians and Baptists and everything is a gang. And I say that to say this, when people come to prison, they try to find a religion 
So they try to find like protection. So either you're gonna be A, if you're not in the game, you're either gonna be A, you're gonna join a gang, you're gonna join a religion, or you're gonna pay somebody for protection, or, or, or you know what I'm saying, to be like your father or your man. You're gonna be a, pop, a penitentiary faggot, you're gonna be someone's girl, you're gonna be someone's son, somebody's little brother, or you're gonna pay for protection, like, if you're a pedophile, uh, uh, child molester, pedophile, they're, they're not, they're not allowed to live. You got one of those type of cases, you're gonna have the hardest bit of effort. Uh, if you're a gangster, your gangster's gonna have to get proven. They might send two or three people at you. You might beat up one, they might send three or four. You might get beat with a lock in the sock. You might get beat with a fan motor. You might get beat with a locker box tray. Now, when they beat you up, right? So they test your gangster. They, they You get beat up. Do they come at you more? Do they keep coming at you? Yeah. Like you're good to leave alone. Because you ain't got no fucking case and you stand on your own. But have you seen have you seen it continue day after day at the same person? Oh yeah, for sure. That, 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 that's been happening to plenty of people. To where they get so tired of getting beat or having to pay that they just it's what we call check in. Tell the police I can't be in population and then when they go to segregation and tell you to come back out, they don't come back out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it too, man. They pack all their stuff and they run to the bubble. Yeah, run to the bubble, yeah. yeah. Some spots they call it the bubble, segregation, the holes, the shoes. And, uh, and then they got to refuse lot so many times and that's them to another prison. And there's some people that have been to multiple or multiple prisons So how is it how is it around Christmas time being locked up? How is it how is the mood in there? Well you got you got like the hot like Christmas people take it in different ways. Like some be sad, some be happy, like like honestly me, I don't sell this call is originating from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored. Like 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 like, like my girl, she called all my kids. In the answer, I sent Texas and, you know, you know, I said that it was very Christmas, you know what I'm saying? We do it in Christmas, we say Christmas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, see how I do this, Christmas. Yeah. You know, but, you know my, all my family, my kids know what it is. Like, my, my kids, like, 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 my kids, they either say, Dad, like, what's your dad's name? They're like, oh, my daddy's L.A. Blue. You know, sometimes they have a little friend at the house, they kind of show off. You know what I'm saying? They'll be teenagers. Like, I only got two kids that's not teenagers. Or three that's teenagers. One already got colleges. I got one that's a, a, a he's the CEO, a, a CEO vice president of Gambling Automotors. So he makes six digits a year legally. I wow. got another son that uh, is a, uh, did five years, five or six years in the Army as a sergeant at the Second in command in, 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 his, in, his, in, 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 in the military uh, for shooting, and he was a sergeant. And he makes, uh, he also went to college there. He's a certified uh, solar paneling, solar paneling, and electrical engineer. And now, and now he, he's also a certified barber. So he made, he was making six digits a year. Yeah, and people I, out there need to know, like, do you could. Do a- like, yeah, yeah, Trey, yeah. That, that's a lot of things. That's why I tell people, if you got to go to prison and you fuck up, you don't got to come back, man. They got trades in here. Like, they don't let us get bachelor's and associates no more, but they do have trades. You can get your CDLs. You get a real CDL license, a truck driver license. You could get, they got barber college in here. They got CDLs. They got animal training. 
they got uh, uh, basic business management. They have college, Xavier College, Ashen College, uh, 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 all the colleges, no matter what, wherever the prison is, by the biggest city you're in, that college will come into that prison and you can actually get real college grants and degrees and vocational trades. Like, like, I took so much in social behavior and anger management and, and, uh, physical training and like I told you I got a hundred plus programs certified programs under my under my belt yeah that's crazy uh, this call is originating from an Ohio correctional facility and may be recorded and monitored so I want to know what's the first thing you're gonna do when you get out uh, first thing I'm gonna do is uh honestly first thing I want to go see uh See my kids, my kids and my grandkids. That's the first thing. I ain't worried about no sex, man. That'll come down the line. First thing, my kids and my grandbabies. I got my, my support system because that's going to bring the reality is going to hit in. Yeah. That's where all the dates are coming the reality. You know what I'm saying? Um, after that, uh, spend some time with my girl. Uh, you know, go go get something to eat and just get my mind right. I don't want to go out in front of a lot of people because I want to. I, I, I've been gone so long that I'm not trying to rush. You ever heard the thing catch up? Like I, I'm not trying to play yeah. catch up. Yeah. Playing catch up. You should have them document it though. When you get out, have them document it, and I could maybe uh put together a documentary for you. That's why you just got to put a different message out there, man. We have one minute remaining. You want to give a shout out to anybody before we go, man? Yeah, man. Shout out to all the real niggas, the 
chains, no rats, no pedophiles, no chomo. Shout out to any real affiliates or even non affiliates, man. And all lives matter, man. But at the end of the day, man, do better, man. If you know better, you're going to do better, man. Education is a new gangster, man. And to all the real locs out there, especially, man, happy holidays to all the real locs. You know what I'm saying, man? Too safe, man. Two minutes, two seconds. Real game, don't bang, man. All peace and love, man. Come together as one, man. Unite. Let's make this shit happen, man. I appreciate you, bro. Definitely. You too, brother. We're definitely gonna do some stuff in the in the future, and uh, keep your head up, man.